humans have taken to the seas and oceans for thousands of years, and before the introduction of combustion engines, these ships mainly relied on wind power for propulsion. This led to the design of phenomenal vessels built to maximize the amount of wind that they can capture. From the greatest functional designs of the 19th century to modern luxurious vessels, it's time to take to the seas and explore the top 15 most remarkable sailing ships. Number 15. Amerigo Vespucci Often regarded as the most beautiful sailing ship ever built, the Amerigo Vespucci, which is named after the famous Italian explorer, is used as a training ship by the Italian Navy. It was first built in 1930 in Naples, based on a design that was inspired by the ships of the line from the 18th century, and entered service in the second half of 1931. It's a full-rigged vessel with three masts, and measures 331 feet long, up to 51 feet wide, and has a displacement of 4,100 tons. The hull is made from steel, and in total has 26 sails made up of square sails, stay sails, and jibs, all of which are made from canvas and cover a total area of over 30,000 square feet. All the ropes are made in a traditional style with hemp, and there's almost 19 miles worth across the rigging and fixtures. Under the right conditions, the vessel is able to reach a top speed under wind power of 14 miles per hour, but it's able to go faster than this with the assistance of a series of diesel engines that were fitted in the 1960s. While the ship is designed for a crew made up of 16 officers, 70 NCOs, and 190 sailors, it's able to accommodate as many as 450 sailors during training voyages. These usually take place in European waters, but the Amerigo Vespucci has ventured further afield, too, with tours to the Americas and even in 2002, a circumnavigation of the globe. Number 14. Sea Cloud First launched in 1931 as a private yacht for an American businesswoman, the Sea Cloud, which was originally known as Hussar 5, was, for a while, the largest of its kind in the world. Measuring 360 feet long, just over 49 feet across, and with a displacement of 3,000 tons, the vessel was offered by its owner to the U.S. Department of the Navy in 1941, but this was rejected because President Roosevelt felt it was too beautiful to be sacrificed. The following year, though, the Navy reassessed this position and hired the yacht for a dollar per year, and sent it to become a weather observation vessel, whereby its masts were removed and its hull was painted battleship gray. It remained under Coast Guard control for weather monitoring for the rest of the war, and it was returned to civilian hands in 1947. It took almost four years to return it to its former glory, and once this was done, it was sold to the leader of the Dominican Republic. In the years since, it's traded owners several more times and now, after significant upgrades, is operated as a cruise ship under the flag of Malta. It's regularly moored at the most prestigious ports around the world and remains one of the most impressive sailing ships you'll ever see. Number 13. Maltese Falcon Built by the Italian shipbuilder Perini Navi for Tom Perkins, the American venture capitalist, the Maltese Falcon is one of the most recognizable and complex sailing yachts ever built. Measuring 289 feet long, the hull was first launched in 1990, but it was only fully completed in 2006. Thought to have cost in the region of $200 million, it has three 187-foot-tall, self-standing, rotating carbon fiber masts that use the Dyna rig system whereby the sails are stored in the masts and can automatically unfurl themselves. Fifteen square sails combine into one without any gaps and can be set in just six minutes. They're trimmed by rotating the masts, which, without any rigging, can adapt quickly to the prevailing conditions and make the Maltese Falcon an effective upwind clipper. Usually for such a large sailing ship, though, this one can, in theory, be operated by just one person, with virtually every process being automated. Now available for charter and featuring luxury amenities such as jacuzzis, a cinema, a spa, and a gym, along with 17 crew, it's no surprise that this is one of the most photographed sailing yachts in the world, and one that's been hired by countless famous faces like Tom Hanks and Hugh Jackman. Number 12. Cuddy Sark Built in Dumberton, Scotland for the Jock Willis shipping line in 1869, the Cuddy Sark was one of the last clipper ships to ever be constructed, and because it represents the pinnacle of the design, it was one of the fastest to ever set sail. Despite this, it was, however, only used on its planned route for carrying tea for a few years before steamships took over, and it was instead placed on routes to Australia to transport wool where it set a travel speed record between England and Australia that it would hold for a decade. Continuing as a cargo ship until 1922 before being used as a training vessel, it was put on display at Greenwich in London in 1954, and has been a museum ship ever since. 
Measuring 280 feet long and 36 feet across the beam, it had a maximum speed of about 20 miles per hour and required a crew complement of around 30 people. It is one of the most beautiful 19th century ships of all, with ornate carvings and designs that were ahead of its time, and it's now been added to the UK's National Historic Fleet as one of only three original composite construction clippers to have survived to the modern age. Number 11. Juan Sebastián Elcano Built in Cadiz, Spain in 1927, the Juan Sebastián Elcano is a four-masted topsail vessel with a steel hull. It's named after the famous Spanish explorer who was captain of Magellan's last fleet and was the first to circumnavigate the globe, and this sailing ship has definitely lived up to its namesake. It's 371 feet long and 43 feet across. There are 21 sails to give a total area of over 30,000 square feet, and it's crewed by up to 390 people. Soon after it was completed, it became part of the newly formed Spanish Republican Navy, and soon it went through a series of upgrades to make it faster and more maneuverable. Amazingly, with a maximum height of 159 feet, it's still the third tallest ship in the world, but it holds an extremely impressive record as currently being the sailing vessel that has sailed the furthest distance ever, having covered more than 2.3 million miles in its lifetime. It was, for a time, the flagship of the Spanish Navy, but it's now used as a training ship for new recruits to learn the principles of sailing and to get used to extended periods of time at sea in relatively cramped conditions. After a series of recent upgrades, it's expected that the Juan Sebastián Elcano will continue in this role for at least another decade or so. Number 10. Shenandoah of Sark Originally commissioned by one of America's richest bankers in 1902, the Shenandoah of Sark has undergone a number of refits since, but retains its charm and character to offer one of the most traditional sailing experiences possible. It's taken part in countless regattas in its time, including the transatlantic race from Tenerife to Virgin Gorda, and the masterful crew with a captain who's been on board for more than 12 years and one member for more than 27 years knows just how to get the best out of this majestic vessel. The three-masted gaff rig schooner has been kept in immaculate condition for over 120 years, and it's the most elegant and sophisticated way that you can take to the waves. Measuring 180 feet, it was last refitted in 2009 and features wood-lined rooms, glass skylights, and a brass onboard library that takes you right back to the golden age of yachting and exploration. This is also a boat with a rich history and character, having been used for parties along the Côte d'Azur and the Amalfi Coast, surviving two world wars, and even spending ten years impounded by the French government as the result of a tax scandal. Now it's available for charter around the Mediterranean, and no matter if there are larger or faster yachts in the vicinity, this is the one that will surely stand out the most. Number 9. Daughter Morgese the incredible-looking Dar Morgese was the prototype for a series of six vessels that were built for the Soviet Union in the early 1980s. Based on designs by Polish naval engineer Zygmunt Koren, changes were made for the following five, which means that this one is the unique original and has gone on to become an important vessel in Poland thanks to it being the first Polish-designed and built sail ship to circumnavigate the globe. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Dar Morgese remained in Polish hands, where it's now officially used as a training vessel but it often takes on roles much larger than that as an ambassadorial ship and is regularly seen in harbors around the world. It's 357 feet long and up to 39 feet across, with a displacement of up to 3,200 tons. When fully rigged, it has a sail area of over 32,000 square feet, and when under wind power, it can reach a top speed of around 18 miles per hour. It does, of course, have engines as a backup, too, and while these achieve slower speeds in calm waters, they give the vessel an effective range of just over 300 miles per day. With a crew complement of up to 176, of which 136 are cadets, almost everyone in the Polish Navy has spent time on this ship, so it's no surprise that it's seen as such a special vessel to all of their sailors. Number 8. Sailing Yacht A Costing an estimated half a billion dollars, Sailing Yacht A is the world's most expensive private sailing yacht, and because of this, it's one of the largest freestanding composite structures ever built. The enormous 468-foot-long vessel is 81 feet across the beam, and the three masts, which reach a maximum height of 328 feet, are made of carbon fiber and can be individually rotated, and the tallest of them even has a room inside for access and storage. The masts are designed to be able to withstand winds of up to 90 knots and can, in theory, capture enough wind in the sails to accelerate the yacht to speeds of up to 21 knots. 
Of course, it's also fitted with engines so it can move when there's no wind, and under engine power alone it's got a range of 5,300 nautical miles. Amazingly, it requires a 54-strong crew to operate, and there are cabins on board across its eight floors that can accommodate up to 20 guests in luxurious surroundings. The exterior design of the yacht is arguably the most unique of any vessel that's ever been built, and will be either the most stunning one you've ever seen or the ugliest. Ever since it first launched, it's turned heads at every port or place it has visited. But while it's probably the most recognizable sailing ship from the outside, very few people know what the interior is like. What is known is that it has a curved glass observation pod in the hull, but other details are vague at best. This is because the ship was built and owned by a Russian oligarch who was very secretive with his affairs, to the point where anyone boarding was required to hand their phone in. Currently, though, it's unlikely you'll see this yacht anywhere other than at port in Italy, because as a result of sanctions placed on its Russian owner, it's been impounded by the Italian authorities. Number 7. Black Pearl Launched in 2018, the Black Pearl was originally owned by a Russian oligarch, but after his death in 2021, the current owners of the vessel remain unclear. It holds the record for being the largest private sailing yacht in the world. Measuring an incredible 350 feet long, it's also been designed with the latest technologies to make it as green as possible, with the designers claiming it can cross the Atlantic using just 5.3 gallons of fuel. This is possible because of a variable pitch propeller that can harvest electricity while the ship is under sail, as well as heat capture technologies, solar panels, and high-density batteries. The three masts are 230 feet tall and by using a dyna-rig system support six yards each, across which 15 square sails are held in a way that there are no gaps and they essentially form a single large airfoil. It takes just six minutes for the sails to move into position as they're stored within the masts and there's no rigging. The masts can freely turn to capture the wind at the best angle. Its maximum sailing speed is 30 knots, which is around 35 miles an hour, but the 12 guests that it can host will be in no rush while they're taking advantage of the on-deck jacuzzi, cinema, full-beam beach club, and all the toys held within the tender garage. Number 6. Shamrock 5 First launched in April of 1930, Shamrock 5 was the first yacht to be built in Britain that conformed to the new J-Class rule with the intention for it to race in the America's Cup. Designed by Charles Ernest Nicholson, it was made entirely from wood, with mahogany planking over steel frames, and unusually a hollow spruce mast. Measuring 120 feet long, Shamrock 5 did eventually make it to the America's Cup, but failed to win a single of the races. But then it was taken on by an industrialist who turned it into a pleasure craft, and it became the only of the J-Class yachts to have ever fallen into a derelict state. Now with a value of around 10 million bucks, the Shamrock 5 has been substantially refitted to modern expectations, and it now even has engines that mean it can continue to sail even if there's a complete lack of wind. Very few details are known about the interior since it's in private hands, but there was a time when it was completely decorated with maple wood, and it's believed that most of this still remains. It holds such an important place in sailing racing history and is so well preserved that Shamrock 5 is a special and stunning vessel that will hopefully be sailing the oceans for many more years to come. Number 5. Red Dragon The 170-foot Dragon is a fast cruising sloop that was built by the Alloy Yachts Yard in New Zealand and launched in 2007. It was designed by Dubois Architects with a design on both luxurious comfort and racing prowess. Built with an aluminum superstructure, the yacht has a 205-foot carbon fiber mast that has a fully battened-in boom furling mainsail. The sails are operated by 11 captive and 6 vertical winches, which makes them extremely easy for the crew to handle, and with a color scheme of gray and white, it has an undeniably smart and sleek appearance. Eight guests can be accommodated in the four double-guest staterooms, and two additional berths just in case there are unexpected visitors. The interior, which was designed by Wilmot & Associates, is both elegant and comfortable, with blonde oak and pale fabrics throughout, which make it feel light and spacious. The bathrooms have Spanish limestone accents, and the bedrooms have artwork sourced from around the world. But if you're on the Red Dragon, it's the exterior where you'll spend most of your time. It has several expansive sun pads, an elevated flybridge that grants incredible views around the yacht as it's sailing, and a shady upper deck that's perfect for entertaining guests and eating. When stationary, the transom opens up to reveal a large swimming platform that's perfect for diving into the water and to use some of the toys on board. But once that's packed away, you can feel the wind gust through your hair as the sails are unleashed and the vessel reaches speeds of up to 20 knots. The Red Dragon was designed to offer the best of both worlds, speed and luxury, and hits the mark on all points. 
Number 4. Sea Eagle 2 Built by Royal Houseman and having embarked on its first sea trials in 2020, the Sea Eagle 2 is a phenomenal 266-foot-long three-masted Panamax schooner. It was designed by the same team responsible for so many of the industry-changing vessels that have been built by the company, and while the initial idea was that this would be more of a classical yacht, the brief changed partway through construction to add a more modern twist by having a faster-looking hull shape with straight lines, a long waterline, and a plumb bow. It looks stunning from a distance, but it almost feels like a boat of two parts when you're on board. There are places where you'll get the sensation of being on a fast sailing yacht, but there's also several large spaces, such as a large saloon in the front part of the superstructure that's designed to be able to host business meetings. By catering to various needs, it's quite possible for the owner to spend most of their time on the yacht and, at the end of the workday, sit back and take in the 360-degree panoramic views. Creating a yacht like this proved to be a challenge because of the need for the interior spaces that limited where structural elements could be placed. While it may look just like the latest in a line of large yachts, the Sea Eagle II has in many ways required a completely different approach to the concept, and the results are incredible. Number 3. Marie. With the distinct black and red hull, you may at first think Marie is little more than a modern pirate ship, but this 180-foot vessel is actually one of the most joyful sailing yachts of all. It was built by Vitters in the Netherlands in 2010 based on designs by Hook Naval Design Architects. Marie has an aluminum hull, an aluminum and teak superstructure, and a teak deck and it's able to accommodate up to eight passengers in the four staterooms, along with further rooms for the eight crew members. In line with the pirate theme, there are miniature cannons on deck, and the amazing open-plan interior is adorned with gold. For entertainment on board, the boat has a Steinway baby grand piano, along with a number of unique aesthetic choices such as an Art Deco-inspired skylight that's above the oval dining table, and a private aft owner's cockpit for when they need some time away from their guests. Registered under the Cayman Islands flag and usually based in the United States, it has a top speed of 17 knots with a cruising speed of about 12 knots, which is plenty to race around the Caribbean islands in search of pristine beaches, maybe some hidden treasure and diving spots where it looks at home in the picturesque surroundings. Number 2. HMS Victory First ordered in 1758 and launched in 1765, the HMS Victory is one of history's most famous warships, having been the flagship of the Royal Navy under Lord Nelson during the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. It was a first-rate ship of the line that measures 227 feet long and 51 feet across the beam. It took wood from 6,000 trees to construct and, with full rigging, could achieve a speed of around 12.5 miles per hour. Armed with 104 guns across five decks and operated by an 850-strong crew, it took part in a number of battles during its operational service and was a feared sight for any enemy forces. It was never technically decommissioned and remains to this day the flagship of the first sea lord of the UK's Royal Navy. This means that the Victory, despite now being a museum ship that you can visit in Portsmouth on the southern coast of England, is the world's oldest naval vessel that's still in commission, with 244 years of cumulative service. Keeping it afloat hasn't been the easiest of projects, though, as the hull is particularly susceptible to decay and sagging. In the past 20 years alone, more than $100 million worth of investments has been dedicated to its upkeep, and this cost is only likely to increase as it ages. Number 1. USS Constellation There have been several ships in the U.S. Navy to bear the name USS Constellation, but by far the most remarkable and impressive is the sloop of war that was built in the 1850s and can now be seen at Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Constructed at the Gutsport Shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia, it was the last sail-only warship to be commissioned by the United States Navy and in many ways represents the pinnacle of the design. Measuring 199 feet long, up to 43 feet across the beam, and with a displacement of 1,400 tons, the USS Constellation had a complement of 286 crew and was fitted with 16 8-inch chambered shell guns, four 32-pounder long guns, a single 20-pounder parrot rifle, a 30-pounder parrot rifle, and three 12-pounder bronze boat howitzers. It was designed to be a fast and powerful vessel, but in the end it had a relatively short-lived period in service because of the introduction of engine-powered ships. After being completed in 1855, the Constellation served in the Mediterranean Squadron until 1858, before being transferred to the African Squadron, and then back to the Med to patrol for Confederate vessels during the Civil War. 
With most of the crew's enlistments having expired, the Constellation returned to the U.S. in 1864 and was decommissioned, and was only recommissioned in 1871 to be used as a training vessel. It performed this role for 22 years, as well as taking on occasional transportation duties, and while there were attempts to bring it back into service after that, it's been a museum ship ever since. It has now been declared a U.S. National Historic Landmark and is on display in Baltimore where the curators are trying their best to maintain its condition. After all, since it was made from wood more than 150 years ago, much of it has since rotted and had to be replaced. It remains, though, a wonderful glimpse back to the old design of warships and one that's well worth visiting if you ever get the chance. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.